So I just printed this drawer to place under a desk. I also printed this egg holders so that we can avoid having egg cartons in the fridge. It saves a lot of space and the egg slide right into our hands. And I also printed this rack for mini computers, which at this moment allows me to place in four mini computers on this home lab vertical style rack, but I can place more. Yeah, this is my first 3D printer and it can be controlled controlled through the touch screen, through the mobile app or even from our computer. It's called the Creality High Combo. I'm loving making things with it and I'll show you how easy it is to set up and how I was able to start printing these all objects I wanted in just a few minutes. So inside the package it comes with this CFS module that supports four filament rolls and automatic multicolor feeding, all the necessary accessories and finally the printer itself which comes in two parts, the bottom base and the support with the print head. I did start by placing the flexible magnetic print bed on the tray, then slide the tray forward and place the support with the print head facing front. Just slides and clicks into place. Then I use the four included screws, two on each side, to attach the arms to the base. On the back there are two more screws that go into each arm and that's it. The structure was assembled and it's easy as this. This was the hardest part. I removed these two pieces of tape holding the wires and connected them to the tray. Two on one side and one on the other. There's no way to get it wrong since the connectors are all different. I tucked the wires into their compartments and placed these grey protective covers so that the wires wouldn't come loose or hit the tray as it moved back and forth. Next I did connect the tray cable to the motor, just plug it in and secured the wire to the arm with these two clips right over here so that it can move up and down without getting stuck. It's super easy, everything is labeled on the printer. Then I did set up the filament feeder which holds the filament spool and if you don't use the CFS, which we will get to that later, we just need to attach it to the top of the printer, lock it into place and then connect the feeding tube from the feeder to the print head. And that's it, the printer is now complete. Of course, we have the CFS which I will show with you how easy it is to use it. But for now let's just use the printer itself. Now I can just connect the power cable and press on. Remove the screen protector and the setup only took about five minutes or so. It asks a few questions, it will connect to our Wi-Fi and optionally to the mobile app. Then it runs some tests and alignment. This will take about 10 minutes or so perfect for grabbing a coffee or a glass of water while it finishes and after that it will ask for a quick firmware update and it's done. Now I was ready to start printing my stuff. Now on the screen we can see the temperature info, we can see Wi-Fi signal, webcam and also five tabs. One is the folder with the saved projects that are ready to be printed. The other one is the filament info, which can be added via RFID reader on the left side of the printer if our filament has, or in my particular case, manually. We just need to select the brand, material type and color, and all this info is on the filament spool. Then we also have the tab for the manual controls, which I didn't really need this yet. And then we have the options with the updates, Wi-Fi settings, enabling the built-in camera to record prints and so on. And finally, the help menu with tutorial guides and also the error history. Then I just grabbed my first filament spool, loaded into the feeder and entered the data on the screen. Brand is Creality, I selected Pet G and Grey Color. That's all the printer needs to set the correct parameters. And to print objects there are many ways but the easiest at first is using the Creality app on our mobile phone. Just pick a model. I did start with a test print, a Benchy, and the first attempt failed because I mistakenly used PLA settings for PETG filament. It's a beginner's mistake and here's the result. So when you start grabbing objects you will see that some of them were designed to be printed with certain material which PLA is the easiest one to use but I did purchase PET G to be used on certain projects that I do have in mind and I wanted to try out with 
pet G. So that was the mistake. And you can see the difference between one and the other one is perfect, which is this white right over here. And the other one has a few imperfections because all the parameters were to be printed as PLA and I was using pet G. But that's part of the process of learning anything new. And towards the end of the video, I will share with you the mistakes that I did so far. Now, although the mobile printing app works, my favorite way is using the desktop app, either on Mac OS or Windows. There are many websites to download 3D models. I will leave the links down below for the credits of the creators in the video description for these models that I did print. And once we download a model, we just need to load it into the app, adjust the orientation if needed of course and then press slice plate review the printing info and hit send to print that's it easy as this now the first object was the drawer it's in three parts it has the lid the holder and the drawer the lid took about 50 minutes to print printed one in gray pet g and another in red PLA. The older didn't come out perfect on the first try, but the second attempt was fine. And then finally, the drawer itself worked great on the first try because I used PLA for this particular right over here. But when I did use PLA on this object here, which is the one that we screwed to the desk, I used PET G and it didn't go well. You can see right over there on the screen that it's perfect until almost half and then something went wrong. I did saw the object wingling a little bit, which was a bit weird. I thought, okay, let's see what it is. Finally, when we look at the final result, it's not good aesthetically. And in terms of function, it's not good as well because it has these imperfections. But once again, it was a mistake. Then I did move to my second object, which was this mini PC rack. It is also in two parts, the base and the top with four legs. I did print these four sets to stack mini PCs. It's really simple and effective. And you can see all the process right over there. It's just a matter of loading to our computer and then sending to the printer. It will take one hour, one hour and a half. And that's it. We have a rack for a home lab a basic one but it's really really simple and something nice and then finally i moved to the egg dispenser which is also in two parts i did print both at once this one required supports which is something that we can talk about in further videos but it's also really easy to place in i did choose three supports and after print it I did glue the two parts together and it works perfectly in the fridge and it saves a lot of space and basically this is it this is the process of downloading and then just putting in the software and send it to the printer and after a couple of hours we will have our printed object of course if we want to learn a little bit more then we can search how to design 3d models and then you will be able to design your models as well but if you don't have the time or if you don't want you just want to print useful stuff this is the easiest way if we get the creality high combo then we will get the cfs and instead of using the spool feeder right over here we will be able to use up to four colors. The setup is also really simple. We just need to stick the feeder to the right side of the printer arm. We double-sided tape, connect the feeding tubes and link the cables. The long one to the printer and the short one to the feeder. And if you are wondering why there's four holes right here on the bottom and if you think that each of these holes is for one of the colors that is right over here, it's not. I did thought that, but this just means that we can use four different CFS. So each CFS will have one single tube to feed in right over here, and we will be able to use four of these. So at maximum, we'll be able to use with this printer right over here, a total of 16 different colors, which is really awesome. Now, once we connect the printer, automatically detects the CFS and everything works automatically. I loaded red PLA, white PLA, black PET G and gray PET G. Each time the feeder tested the filament by pushing it close to the print head and then pulling it back to check if the flow is okay. If the spool has RFID, it auto detects the material type. Otherwise, we will input it manually, same as we did at the beginning with the single color. The biggest advantage here is that we can print multiple color models without manually swapping spools. But when we use this kind of systems, 
there will be more waste in terms of plastic, which is something that we have to concern when we are thinking about printing our object. Power consumption, if you are concerned about that, because that's one of the concerns that I've got here with every single device that comes to my hands. I did observe that the maximum power consumption was about 700 watts hour. It was in the beginning when it's hitting the head and hitting the bed, but then it has an average of 140 watts hour, which in my opinion surprised me by the positive, which is a low consumption. That being said, hope that you enjoyed this video, hope that you enjoyed this first experience with a 3D printer. If that was the case, don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.